Today, we're uncovering hidden tales and journeying into the core of remarkable events. Welcome to another episode of Unfolding History, where we explore the past to make sense of the world we live in today. In this episode, we're unraveling the captivating story of the Navajo Code Talkers and their unique Native American language, which played a crucial role in shaping the outcome of World War II. It was Saturday, March 3rd, 1933, and Franklin D. Roosevelt was inaugurated as President of the United States. In his inaugural speech, he told those gathered, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Roosevelt was talking to a nation that was under the grip of the Great Depression. Unemployment was high, and Americans were struggling financially. The unemployment rate was at an astonishing 25% in 1933, and it was truly a desperate time for the country. While things were grim in the United States, Events were unfolding in Europe and Asia that would send the world to war. Fascism and all of its evils was a major issue in Europe. Germany was under the control of Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party. Italy was ruled by Benito Mussolini. The two countries formed an alliance, built up their militaries and set out to conquer Europe. In Asia, Japan began expanding their powers beyond their island. During the 1930s, Japan invaded China and Korea. Their goal was to rule over East Asia and no one was to stand in their way. War broke out in Europe in 1939 when Germany invaded Poland. Britain and France were aligned with the Soviet Union and Germany's move put the gears of war into movement. The world would be stunned as Germany moved quickly across continental Europe. The truly shocking event was June 14, 1940, when Germany successfully invaded France. Britain was left on its own to fight after discovering the Soviet Union and Germany made a secret pact not to fight. However, Germany had no intentions of following the pact. They were preparing to stab the Soviet Union in the back when the time was right. The United States was in the middle of this turmoil. They secretly gave aid to Britain, but they could not avoid conflict forever. There were people at home pushing the United States towards war, while others pushed for the United States to take a neutral stance. Eight years after his inaugural speech, Roosevelt addressed Congress and a wounded nation on Monday, December 8, 1941, following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. He said, Yesterday, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Japan. The United States would soon be at war with Japan. A few days after Roosevelt's speech, Japan's allies, Germany and Italy, declared war on the United States. A world was at war, and the United States was fighting their enemies on two fronts. A state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. There was the European theater against Germany and Italy, and a Pacific theater against the Japanese. It was not easy, but victories were earned on the battlefield thanks to the brave soldiers who stood up to the evils of fascism. Those who served fought bravely for the United States of America. Some of those who served with honor and courage were the Navajo Code Talkers, also known as the Wind Talkers. Their mission was to provide vital data in a code rooted in their Navajo, or Diné, language, which was something the enemy could not decipher. Their skill, dedication, and bravery is something that should not be overlooked or forgotten in American history. Ciphers and codes have been used in military operations for thousands of years. In 1860, the United States Signal Corps was created by Major Albert J. Meyer. The Signal Corps provided important communication services for the U.S. Army, and they were the first to have a separate communications branch. Codes became more complex during World War I due to the advancement of technology. Telegraphs and radio were used to communicate to the front lines, but it had to be in code, so the enemy would not know their positions or movements. But an enemy should never be underestimated. Code breakers were used to reveal the secret messages sent by the US military during the war. One example from a World War I code reads, Abide Abyss Local Taste for Intelligence, Local Taste Division. Abide meant officers at headquarters, and Abyss meant general staff officers. If the enemy were to intercept this transmission, they would have to go through the painstaking process of breaking the code. There were times when the enemy would crack the code and compromise an important mission. Philip Johnston served during World War I and understood the importance of codes that were 
undecipherable. During that war, the Native American language Choctaw was used by the United States military. Eight men from the Choctaw Nation served in France in 1918 and sent coded information in their language. Those codes were incredibly difficult for the enemy to decipher, and it gave the US military an advantage on the battlefield. Johnston knew using Native American languages as a code was a great plan because a select group of people knew the language. Also, many Native American languages did not have an alphabet, making these languages unique. Johnston was the son of missionaries that worked with the Navajo, a Native American tribe that lived in places like New Mexico, Utah, and Arizona. Johnston knew something amazing about the Navajo and their culture from his personal experience living on a reservation. The Navajo language is unwritten and extremely complex. The numbers are unknown, but in 1941 it is believed that less than 30 non-Navajo people in the world understood the Navajo language. Johnston was one of them, and he knew it would be a perfect language to use on the battlefield as a coded message. At the time, machines were capable of sending a code three lines long in 30 minutes. Johnston, in 1942, showed Major General Clayton B. Vogel the task could be done using a Navajo code talker in a mere 20 seconds. Vogel was in charge of the amphibious corps of the Pacific Fleet, and he was impressed with Johnston's idea. The Army began recruiting Navajo men in 1940, and many were from Oklahoma. A few years later, the Navy recruited Navajo men, and then Marine Corps recruited 200 Navajo men to join. 29 Navajo recruits joined the Marine Corps in May 1942 and were sent to boot camp. Those that served had to be fluent not only in Navajo but also English. At the same time, a code was developed at Camp Pendleton in California. Certain words derived from the Navajo language were used for military terms so information could be sent quickly during battle. Navajo code talkers were sent to training sessions where they were given the task of learning the code. Not only was this a difficult task, but there was an alternate code to learn as well. Some of the US military terms were not part of the Navajo language, so the alternate code was the solution. Basically, they were creating a new language and only the code talkers knew it. For example, the word submarine was not part of the Navajo language. They decided to use a word in their language that meant iron fish. William McCabe, who served as a Navajo code talker, recalled all the services like the army and divisions and companies and battalions, regiments. We just gave them clan names, airplanes we named after birds, like the buzzard is bomber and the hawk is a dive bomber and the patrol plane is a crow and the hummingbird is the fighter. The Navajo were not the only ones used by the United States military during World War II as code talkers. Some 14 native groups served in these key roles. For the Native Americans that served, it was interesting that their language was needed for military use. During the 19th and 20th centuries, there were parochial schools in the United States where Native American were sent to assimilate. This meant adopting the Western dress, the Christian religion, and the English language. Children were punished for speaking their native languages in these schools. Keith Little was a Navajo code talker that was a student at a parochial school. He recalled, they had the real strong disciplinary rule that we don't talk our native language, to be converted to Christianity, and to take us away from our cultural religions and our beliefs. Also, the Navajo had been forcibly removed from their ancestral lands during the 19th century, during a time known as the Long Walk. The relationship between the Navajo and the United States government was complicated, and there were many emotional scars left on the children that attended those parochial schools. The code talkers were sent into combat, and their main duties were battlefield transmitters that sent vital data over radio about tactics and movement. It was important that the Army, Navy and Marines did not have their information intercepted because the Japanese and Germans were masters of breaking codes used by the Army and the Army Air Corps. Peter MacDonald was a Navajo code talker during World War II and during a 2017 appearance at the White House he stated, in the early part of World War II, the enemy was breaking every military code that was being used in the Pacific. This created a huge problem for strategizing against the enemies. The Japanese code breakers could not conquer the Everest that was the Navajo language and code. When they began the Navajo code project, there were some 211 specific code words. And by the end of the war, there were some 411 words. The Navajo soldiers had to learn all of the words and they were expected to be 100% efficient in their duties in sending and receiving messages. What is even more impressive is that they did all of this important work without writing down a single line of code. The reason is that the soldiers were forbidden to write anything down during training. Everything had to be from memory. Every message had to be perfect. The project for the code talkers was secretive and nothing could get into the hands of the enemy. The Navajo code talkers were deployed on missions in the Pacific, like Iwo Jima. Major Howard Connor, 5th Marine Division signal officer declared, 
Were it not for the Navajos, the Marines would never have taken Iwo Jima. During the fierce fighting at Iwo Jima, the Code Talkers received and sent some 800 messages without any errors. It is written that the Navajo Code used during World War II was never broken. The Navajo Code Talkers were used from 1942 until the end of the war in 1945. Some 400 Navajo men served the United States military as Code Talkers. Their work in the Pacific Theater was crucial in saving the lives of thousands of soldiers during combat. Chester Nez was a Code Talker during World War II, and he proudly recalled in 2021, we acted as coding machines, transmitting messages that would have taken a couple of hours in just a couple of minutes. We could never make a mistake because many communications involved bombing coordinates. Thomas Begay was a 17-year-old Navajo teen in Arizona in 1943. He told the Arizona Republic newspaper in 2019 that he wanted to fight the Japanese and he wanted to be an aerial gunner. The military had different plans for Begay. They sent him to learn the code to be used by Navajo soldiers. He wasn't familiar with operating a radio or using Morse code. He told the Arizona Republic, I learned quick, I memorized quick. The first real test for the code talkers was the Battle of Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands during the summer of 1942. This was part of the Allied campaign to move across the Pacific in a campaign known as Island Hopping. The goal was to get key Allied positions in the Pacific for the fleet and for aircraft to carry out missions against the Japanese. Not all code talkers were sent to the Pacific theater. Some men served in the European theater and played a key role in Allied victories, like the D-Day invasion of June 6, 1944. While some 400 Navajo served as code talkers, there were 13 men killed in action. Overall, some 44,000 Native Americans were enlisted and saw action during World War II. Out of the 44,000, there were 800 women who served. The work of the Navajo code talkers was not made public immediately following the war. Those who served were living with an incredible secret. Chester Nez said in a 2004 interview, When we got out, discharged, they told us this thing that you guys did is going to be a secret. When you get home, you don't talk about what you did. And that was our secret for about 25, 26 years. Reality for many of the Navajo Code Talker veterans was a life of poverty and inequality. All of the Navajo Code Talkers stayed true to their oath to keep their work and mission a secret in case the code was needed again. A Navajo Code Talker veteran told the press in 2005, if anybody asked us what we did, we were only supposed to say we fought in the war. It was 1968 when the project was declassified. Some Code Talkers said they finally told their families their secret in the 1970s. A son of the code talkers summed up the silence. They did not talk about it because they were told not to talk about it, and in that respect, that's honorable. Slowly, the work of the code talkers became public. Many years would pass before there was national recognition for their work. A movie about the code talkers called The Wind Talkers was released in 2002 and starred Nicolas Cage. It was loosely based on the experiences of the Navajo code talkers. Presidents like Ronald Reagan, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Donald Trump honored the code talkers during their presidencies. The Code Talkers were awarded the Congressional Gold and Silver Medals for their wartime efforts. President Reagan made August 14, 1982 National Navajo Code Talkers Day. The great work, bravery and dedicated service of the Navajo Code Talkers in World War II should not be forgotten. These brave soldiers allowed the United States military to succeed in the Pacific and European theaters. Many Americans died during World War II to protect freedom at all costs. When remembering his service to our country, Navajo Code talker Thomas Begay said, the code talkers are special. They went to make this country free, but also show the world we are people regardless of what happened to us. We just keep moving forward. In Window Rock, Arizona, there is a statue dedicated to the Navajo code talkers. It was erected in 2010, and the designer was Navajo Ute sculptor Orlan Joe. There is another Navajo code talker statue located in Gallup, New Mexico, near the Gallup Cultural Center. The work and dedication of the Navajo code talkers are appreciated by people around the world, some 80 years after their project was developed.